Oh, oh, I'm humping him. Bro. Oh. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> what the hell? Why, well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Achievement Grind, Platinum Hunt, and 100%ing Journey. Today, we have the insanely requested sequel, Borderlands 2. You all enjoyed the hell out of the first Borderlands video, so why not keep this trend going with the next game? And honestly, the best one of the series. Just think of the first Borderlands achievements with RNG and tediousness, but doubled, tripled, and just more of them in every single way. I am glad I did not play Borderlands 2 immediately after the first one, because I can promise you this, I was one unhappy person by the end of this. And for anybody that cares, I am going to be doing not just the base game achievements, but all the damn DLC achievements too. And to be honest, the DLCs are low-key kind of dog water. The majority of these felt lazy and uninspired. I don't know if most people feel like this, but I really couldn't get into them, and they were just a chore for me. But luckily, I still tried to make the best of weird or bad scenarios and carried on. I also remember the first time I ever got this game. I I was a 14 year old lad going into this game and if you remember from the previous Borderlands video, I got the first one for my birthday. So after enjoying the first one, my dad took me to my local GameStop at the midnight release and let me skip school to play it all day. So go dad. But unfortunately, after I 100%ed everything, like the first week it came out, I returned to the game that following week and quite literally did not play a single DLC, did not touch this game until I got a PC, and finally leads to the present day of me playing this game's DLCs for the first time. And before we get started, make sure to subscribe, like, and to come check out my Twitch channel at Yoma97. I try to have fun over there, and it'd be awesome if you guys come and check me out. But without further ado, let's begin the 75 achievements with a better and banger sequel, Borderlands 2. To begin, the banger introduction video showcases our new Vault Hunters that we get to play as, and a little introduction to one of the best antagonists, Handsome Jack, which he doesn't like Vault Hunters because of, uh, plot reasons. He sabotages the train we are riding and leaves us for the dust. We are found by our dope little robot, Claptrap, and leads us to his little hideout for our first achievement. After Claptrap's eyeball being ripped out by a big boy bully mong, we meet the meticulous Sir Hammerlock to begin what this game does best, doing quests, shooting things without a question asked, and collecting the bajillion different types of guns over and over. Speaking of collecting, after shooting some enemies, I hit level 5 for our second achievement, Not Quite Dead. My following plans for this game included doing every single side mission known to man. This isn't because I'm quirky, it's because there are achievements tied to miscellaneous missions, discoverable locations, locations, and finally, a big boy achievement for completing every single side mission. Continuing on, I unlocked the How Do I Look achievement for finding some Fortnite skins. And after doing Hammerlocks and Claptrap's quests, we found a boss named Captain Flint, and as we were fighting him, I revived one of my teammates for an achievement, and after destroying Captain Flint, I got an achievement for completing that quest line. Claptrap is currently taking us to the city of Sanctuary, guided by our guardian angel. We are going there to join up with the Crimson Raiders, who do not like Handsome Jack, for which their mission is to destroy him and the Hyperions. Upon arriving to the city of Sanctuary, I got an achievement for putting a new city shield on, and got introduced to one of my favorites from Borderlands 1, Scooter. You never take me alive, you robotic stone bitch! I would talk to everyone at Sanctuary for their own little introductions and an achievement. I would also be told that Roland is the leader of the Crimson Raiders and needs rescuing from the Firehawk. Roland is one of the main characters that we played as in Borderlands 1. The characters from that game are now supporting characters for our new main characters, if that makes sense. And just before we leave Sanctuary, I was told that there was a missable achievement for giving Claptrap a high five. So I decided to test that theory and attempted to give him some skin. What do you mean, bro? With the story and achievements progressing, I would hit level 10, and plot twist, the Firehawk that captured Roland was actually Lilith, another one of the main four characters of Borderlands 1, and she did not actually capture Roland, like at all. He was actually captured by a bunch of bandits, so now obviously, the next objective would be to go get our boy Roland. But before we managed to go after him, I would upgrade a Goliath to its max level, which to even get to the max level, you have to let it kill other enemies first, and then it upgrades to the final form, Fatal Godliath. 
And after all of my hard work trying to find a Goliath and upgrade him, one of my ex-friends, Ross, decided to be a big butthead. Ross, you just stole my fucking kill! But luckily with Ross apprehended, I actually was able to land the final blow on the fatal Godliath and got the achievement tied to him. After finding the Firehawk, or Lilith in this case, we got the questline achievement for her too. I managed to redeem 25 tokens, which are used in unison with badass ranks. I also bought 5 items from the black market, which are simply ammo and backpack upgrades, from Crazy Earl or the What You Want guy. Pistol? Maybe that helps you kill stuff better. Purchase five items from the black market. Hey. And you might be wondering and asking to yourself, yo, my, where does the RNG come into play? You said there was more of it. So where is it? Well, let me introduce you to one of the many RNG written achievements called Tribute to a Vault Hunter. This achievement is pretty simple. There will be a guy named Michael Mama Rill, who is an NPC Vault Hunter that will spawn in one of 10 locations. The problem is he only has a 10% chance to appear. And on top of that, you have to restart your game every time if he doesn't load in. Which with these odds, he didn't spawn for almost 30 minutes of constantly reloading over and over again. So at the end of the night for my stream, I decided to try and knock this one out because RNG and I are arch enemies. And after many resets, I was one attempt off from giving up, I swear, and finally got that damn Michael to give me a terrible gun and achievement. Actually though, this is actually the last one, I'm not gonna lie. Like, make fun of me all you want. This, this is actually the last one. This is actually the last. I'm not lying. I would never lie to chat. This is this is actually I'm not I'm done. I'm actually done, because we're about to hit five hours. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say! That's what they say! I told you, gamblers always win. You always stop <laughs> before you hit big. That was, I'm not even joking. That was actually my last try. Like, I, like, I know I joked around with the ones. That, this was actually the last try. If you see me in town later, hit me up. I might Let's go, Michael. With that dumb achievement out of the way, we are now on our way to rescuing Roland from those bandits. And remember, I'm doing every single side mission that pops up because... <laughs> I have to. And with some missions completed, I got the Bounty Hunter achievement too. Furthermore, just like Borderlands 1, there are numerous bugs that happened, and most of them are volume or jump scare ones. I walk into a level, into this open section, and all of a sudden, the volume decides to just get cranked to the highest level. No explanation why, and everyone just has to deal with it. Oh, it's loud. It's loud. Who's fucking shooting? Oh, it's it's really loud. I, I'm yelling. I'm yelling. And here is one more instance of the audio bugging like crazy. Now, with my audio being bugged and my joy starting to take a dive, we finally freed Roland from the bandits and managed to get the questline achievement tied to him as well. We take Roland to Sanctuary and learn that one of the vault keys stolen from Tannis is being transported on a Hyperion train. So our next story objective is to get that vault key back and derail that train. But before we do that, I destroyed a constructor without it building another bot, met up with the third original Borderlands character, Mordecai, to help help us derail this train. And honestly, another character that just makes the Borderlands 2 cast amazing, Tiny Tina, for whom which might need some serious therapy because this child is murdering fools without a second glance. I would use one of the fun TDR weapons to kill a flying enemy, which a TDR weapon is special from the bunch because every time you reload, you toss the weapon to explode as a replacement for reloading. Pretty awesome if you ask me. While doing Tiny Tina's bomb quest, I discovered all the named locations in Three Horns, Tundra Express, and Frostburn Canyon for their own achievement. After some preparation, we would derail the train with the vault key and find out that there is no vault key but another boss named Wilhelm, which is obviously a reference to that infamous scream used in movies sporadically. We defeat Wilhelm, and he drops a power core that our guardian angel and Roland suggests that we use it as a new shield for Sanctuary. 
And right before we put in that shield, we got the questline achievement for the train sequence. And I decided to become a simp for Mad Moxie even after what she did to my mental from her Underdome DLC and tipped her $10,000 of my hard-earned cash. Additionally, we put in our totally real and not booby-trapped power core from Wilhelm to protect the city of Sanctuary and got the witness what happens when you pick up things that are not yours and trusting people you don't know. With Lilith activating the city's engines and teleporting it away from harm, I would get the questline achievement for those events, and we would additionally get another questline achievement for finding our way back to Sanctuary. Handsome Jack wants to open up another vault and unleash a big boy monster named Warrior, where he falls under control to whomever opens the vault first. So obviously, Handsome Jack wants that treasure and that new pet to himself. Angel is now back on our team for some reason, and me being skeptical at first, didn't want her back on her comms, but she said that she knows where the vault key is at, and who would have guessed that it was with her, but guarded by a shit ton of Hyperion robots. Not me, but that was our closest way to get to the vault and stop Handsome Jack from doing bad things. But before all that story progressed, I had to stop by and do a few important things, like visiting good old Minecraft. Oh my god, is this Minecraft? We're mining! It's mining time! I would also like to take this opportunity to showcase an old ass meme back in the day about a double rainbow all the way. There's an Easter egg. I saw a video today about this. While going after Angel and the Vault Key, Handsome Jack would not be funny anymore after the head explosion he caused a Bloodwing. <sighs> that son of a bitch. Which would lead us to my next questline achievement for, well, playing through the wildlife preservation and uh, Bloodwing's early demise. As I was doing the abundance of side missions, I hit level 25, completed round 5 of a Circle of Slaughter mission, which is quite literally a smaller version of Mad Moxie's Underdome, so I was not happy with that. And then while invading the Slab King's hideout, a guy requested that I shoot him in his face. Like all over his face. Face, 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 face. He wanted it in his face. Did I mention he wanted me to shoot his face? Well, yeah. I shot his face and was rewarded with an achievement. Yay! Weighing the moral pros and cons, but let me assure you that oh my god, shoot me at the goddamn face! What are you waiting for? All right, homie wants to shoot me in the face. All right, thank you. <laughs> And if you haven't guessed it by now, the Slab King is Brick from Borderlands 1, and the last and final main character of that game. Whoa, man, who would have guessed? After recruiting Brick for the Angel and Vault Key raid, I was rewarded with Brick's questline achievement. And I should probably mention this, but Borderlands 2 would have 50 base game achievements and then 7 DLC packs with 25 achievements all together. So it was, uh, interesting to say the least. But I would still be racking up these achievements and progressing the story with each playthrough through. Speaking of achievements, I would get the Urban Explorer for discovering the named locations in Sanctuary, Opportunity, and Lynchwood. It's like, huh. Bethesda is a very dick riding, has, has a big, hey, here we go. We would do a main story mission to get more data on Handsome Jack, to impersonate him to infiltrate a Hyperion facility for the identity theft achievement. I'd land another achievement for discovering more locations in the Highlands, Thousand Cuts, and Wildlife Preservation Preserve. And if you think showcasing these discovery locations are annoying, just wait until we continue this trend into the DLCs. My team and I would start the infiltration by fighting a boss named Bunker, and after defeating Bunker, <laughs> we would be allowed into the facility by an elevator. And at the end of this elevator, we found out that Angel is in fact a real girl, a siren, and dun dun dun, Jack's daughter. Whoa, this is too much for me, man. But the overall gist of this is Handsome Jack is using his siren daughter's abilities to charge the vault key to gain access to the vault and monster within it. So after a long and tedious process of releasing and ultimately killing Angel, our team was recouping from that madness when something uncalled for happened. Lilith, take the ball key to Tannis. I'm going after Jack. Son. You bastard! I'm gonna- Whoa! 
language. This would easily land as a questline for all of those events, and the later half of this game would be pretty straightforward. Handsome Jack is now using Lilith to do exactly what he was doing with his daughter. We are now preparing an attack on the vault, and first, we need to find the location of said vault. As preparation commences, we unlock the story questline achievement Bombs Away for gathering supplies. I would visit an extremely familiar place for the feels like the first time achievement. But we're getting an old style achievement right here, chat. Old style achievement. Here we go, Borderlands 1 reference, baby! Thank you. Hyperion's gonna have to spend it's a reference! Which this would lead us to one of the last story questline achievements for finding the exact location of Jack, Lilith, and the Warrior for the Knowing is Half the Battle achievement. And it all comes down to this. We have all the information, supplies, and manpower to take Jack out of the picture. We ultimately find his ass in the vault ready to open it up. We fought him for an epic boss battle, and before he passes out, he releases the Warrior for us to deal with. Oh, how great. And remember, the warrior obeys anybody that releases him first, so of course, Jack tells it to kill us. After a good final boss battle with the warrior, I was allowed to execute Jack with a shot to the dome and got a secret achievement to go along with it. With Jack officially dead, we see that there are numerous new vaults ready to be discovered, and finally gives us the credit screen. Yeah, we did it. We beat the game. And that's pretty much the story of Borderlands 2. We obviously still got a good amount of achievements left, so let's keep it going. I would get stuck for a few hours after the final boss for trying to discover all named locations. I had to check every single mapped level multiple times because everything was already discovered except for one area where you have to take an elevator to underground. I got two achievements. Oh my god. World Traveler, it was this area. That's so dumb. It didn't even tell me on the map. Boom. And then I got another achievement that I, it didn't, I don't think it popped up, but... The other achievement was Blight Explorer. From this point on, we are now doing all of the DLCs. There was a mission in the base game for killing Terramorphus the Invincible, which is technically the last mission of the base game. But unfortunately, this requires me to be level 50, which was the highest level of the base game. So this made it where DLCs were a must, and I had to move on. I decided to have some fun with these DLCs by playing them in the order they originally came out in. I would begin with Captain Scarlet and her pirate's booty. And I know I shouldn't be complaining, about DLC, but somebody please explain to me why Captain Scarlet, Sir Hammerlock, and Mr. Torg's DLCs all had three achievements in each one. They all had three complete all side mission achievements, and two of them had a discover all locations achievements too. And Captain Scarlet's DLC was not the worst, but not the best either. It had memorable characters like Pervert Herbert and the vehicles too. I honestly think it's because I've been playing this game for a hot minute, and the DLCs just fill them out with even more missions. But the story on this DLC is basically Captain Scarlet is searching for Captain Blade's lost treasure of the sands. And throughout the whole DLC, she says with full transparency, she's gonna betray us. And she was not lying. And of the three achievements for this DLC, which makes it harder for me to piece these together, I got the first achievement, Treasure Hunter, for killing the final boss, the Leviathan, which was at the end of the DLC. And that's pretty much it. I would also grab the last two achievements, one for discovering all the names locations, and then the final achievement for completing all of the side missions, which usually includes a raid boss at the end of each DLC. There we go, baby. Complete all pirates' booty side missions, baby. Well, that's pretty much it. I'm not joking. That's the whole DLC. It took me less than three hours to get all the achievements to quite literally finish this DLC fully. I thought I did not rush this at all, but I guess I did, or I don't know. But uh, time to move on to the second DLC, and I'm not here to waste all of your time, but the next DLC up is probably one of the best ones in the game, and it's called Mr. Torg's Campaign of Carnage. Sincerely believe this is fucking awesome! It's so awesome that we're gonna set up a tournament to find us number one badass. If you want in, come to where the vault is buried. 
in the badass crater of badass and two buried this guy is the energy i needed from that last dlc we played the story for this dlc is basically a new vault is discovered and buried in the center of the badass crater of badassitude and will only open once the champion of pandora feeds it the blood of the ultimate coward and Mr. Torg, being the CEO of the Exploding Guns, sets up a tournament where all the vault hunters, bounty hunters, and all of the alike versus each other. Now this DLC, I can get behind. The characters are all funny and personable, the locations are at least more tight-knit, the quests are goofy and enjoyable, and it's just a fun time overall. I would manage to get a base game achievement in this DLC for killing a chubby. A chubby? A chubby? That should be an achievement. Let's go. Hey, look at that. I needed a chubby. I got a chubby. These are just rarer enemy types that drop better loot. Nothing too crazy, but purely RNG. And the final boss fight of this DLC is versus a robotic monster from one of the contestants called the Badass Asaurus. And once we kill that machine, we turn in the final quest line and gain the achievement tied towards it, which that would be the final achievement I'd get for this DLC. This DLC had around three to four missions tied to being level 50. So that meant I was completely shit out of luck because the achievement Motorhead for completing all the side missions was obviously unobtainable at the moment. And then the last achievement, Obsessed, is another RNG based achievement where some enemy types drop pictures of Mad Moxie with less clothing. So I moved off this DLC and would come back when I was level 50. Now, Hammerlock's DLC is easily the worst DLC in this whole game. I'm not going to talk much about this because I seriously did not like any part of this at all. It was boring, the missions were boring, the levels were boring, and even the enemies were more boring. It was just all boring, man. This DLC would also include three achievements like I said before. One for completing the last mission, one for all the side missions, and one for discovering all the locations. It took me one hour and 45 minutes to complete the main story for the face-off achievement, and then I would take the next four hours to get the last two achievements for this DLC, which I hope you are all ready for this, but a lot of these missions were tied to purely good old-fashioned RNG. I absolutely love love RNG. It just makes games extremely better in every single way. I would manage to finally discover all the named locations of this DLC, which were not fun at all. The maps are huge with barely any vehicles to speed the process up, which I would spend a few more hours grinding side missions after side missions after side missions. Only two of them really stumped me. One for killing Veraticus the Invincible, which is another raid boss once you beat the DLC, and then the final final side mission called I Like My Monsters Rare. And of course, what they mean by rare is the rarity of finding these dumbass monsters. I need to kill eight pink Boroks, eight tailless scallions, six two-legged drifters, five albino skags, and finally, four slag spores. Overall, I could go in depth and tell you how rare these monstrosities are, but that would be stupid. These monsters require me to save and quit my games hundreds of times to just get a spawn in different sections of this DLC. If you know, you know. But finally, I managed to get my last spore and turned in this last damn side mission to get the achievement. Which I would say this would be our last DLC of Borderlands 2, but they released a DLC around uh, seven years later for the release of Borderlands 3 to continue the story of Borderlands 2 into 3. I have no idea why or whatever, but we carry on. I did not stream any part of Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep because I got sick from a wedding that I had just attended to. Now this is easily the best DLC of this entire game. So much that they made it into a complete spin-off and separate game recently, which I probably won't go over for a while, so don't ask. But this DLC story is basically a rendition of Dungeons and Dragons, but told under our new game master, Tiny Tina. And she likes to swap things around instantly, changes enemies, makes new rules, and just does anything she likes. It's an amazing time, and I enjoyed every single minute of it. Also, this DLC would include the most achievements of any DLC with a total of 10. This literally has more than the previous three DLCs we just did. What the hell, man? Continuing on, we slay our first boss, Mr. Bony Pants Guy. If that name did not give you an indication yet, but yes, these bosses, enemies, and quest lines are all from a child, so be ready. And while we are going through the dark forest to rescue our queen, I rolled a perfect 20 to get our first RNG achievement 
achievement. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. And with a weird plot twist, our boy Roland shows back up from the land of the dead and becomes part of the living somewhat. There are hints throughout this whole DLC showing that the Vault Hunter crew are all mourning from Roland's death except for Tiny Tina. And that's all I'll say for now. But after saying hi to our White Knight, aka Roland, with Tiny Tina's dialogue, I would unsheathe five swords from the backs of immortal Skeletars. I would shoot the darkness for the It's Like That One video achievement, which this is a reference to a deep meme or lore video of Dungeons and Dragons. I looked it up and it still confused the hell out of me for what they mean, so if you know what this means, let me know in the comments please. I would luckily get a randomly spawned character that I needed to buy an amulet from and wore it for the hmm achievement. The main villain of this DLC is basically Handsome Jack, and he's the sorcerer at the top of the tower holding our queen. We easily dispose this knockoff Saruman, and the deep meaning of this campaign is immediately explained after defeating him. The handsome sorcerer is dead! And guess who showed up to celebrate? Everyone's favorite invincible knight, Rowan! That's, that's enough, Tina. You did it. We've won. And Roland showed up and he was really happy and everyone lived forever and it was great the end. Enough! You can't- So the underlying tone of this whole DLC is that Tiny Tina couldn't accept the fact that Roland was dead. He took care of her and kept her on the good side. It's low-key kind of sad and depressing for what is overall an enjoyable DLC. And our queen that we were trying to rescue was the one and only Butt Stallion. I would end this DLC with a sad credit scene of Tiny Tina accepting Roland's death with a hug on his memorial statue. And I got the Shorty You So Best achievement for beating the DLC as well. Moreover, I would continue to get the rest of the DLC's achievements, which I started by doing the Magic Slaughtering, which is basically Mad Moxie's Underdome survival arena, but with shorter waves and six rounds all together. This really wasn't fun at all. It just felt tedious in every regard, but I managed to complete all six rounds to get the dang girl you ace at this game achievement. I would eventually meet up with our saved queen and feed her Iridium three times for an achievement too. She literally shits out weapons each time you feed her, so that's disgusting. And after all this time playing this game, I finally wore all purple rated gear for an achievement. And finally, the Tiny Tina's DLC was completed. Like I said before, this is easily the best DLC of this whole game. So now we are almost done with all the achievements. I had some plans going on with it, so I decided to mainly focus on the long and annoying achievement challenge accepted. The fast explanation of this is basically we need to do all level 1 challenges in the badass rank section of your HUD. These challenges are so you can get more badass ranks basically giving you more stats to your main character. The problem with this is that there are a ton of these challenges. Like, look at this list. You have to discover locations, kill certain enemies, use shotguns for 750 kills point blank to unlock another shotgun challenge, and all of that. The reason why I did not explain it at all during this video is because it's confusing to keep track when I'm mostly doing it behind the scenes or having literally a hundred plus to do. <laughs> or having literally a hundred plus to do. But the only challenge that I will say that sucked entirely was the Jimmy Jenkins challenge. This is basically finding a little loot guy in a container, but it's purely RNG. I looked up guides on where to spawn him and the spawn rates, and quite literally no one knows the possibility of getting this dude. Some people took three plus hours and others took minutes. It's purely RNG. So I took the initiative and recorded my entire process of going for Jimmy Jenkins. I got a good save and quit spawn location so I could hit loot boxes every second and went after him. I got insanely lucky because this little bastard only took me around 30 minutes of purely resetting. And with me being level 42, I wanted to get level 50 immediately so I can beat the base game side missions, the Mr. Torx campaign missions, and basically beat every single side mission and challenge. So I had a good viewer of mine help me power level up to level 50 because I was bored and wanted this game over with. So he helped me level up 8 times in like an hour or so by doing different 
different missions and this bar fight repeatedly so I can finally be level 50. Just like Borderlands 1, it wants you to use all the character's abilities, but this time, they want you to do very specific things as well. First, I started with Maya's ability with phase locking, which I did a hundred times. And unfortunately, this one took me an hour to get because it's known to be bugged for some reason, but luckily, I unlocked it. I also did Axton Saber Turret achievement for simply killing a hundred enemies with his ability. I had a fully fledged plan this time. With me being level 50, I was going to finish all the remaining side missions, miscellaneous missions, and base plus DLC achievements before I started the last DLC. Most of the DLCs took around 2-4 to four hours, so I wasn't worried about taking too long. I knew this stream was going to be a fun achievement grind, so I initially started by getting Zero's ability achievement for being in his deception for 10 seconds. I would scurry on over to Mr. Torque's campaign to finish those level 50 missions as well. This would give me the Motorhead achievement for finally completing all the DLC's missions. I also obtained those very lewd photos of Mad Moxie for the Obsessed achievement, which finally concludes Mr. Torque's DLC. I would leave that DLC in the dust and head back to get a few more base game achievements, and I would begin in the epic battle of Terramorphus the Invincible. He needed a requirement of level 50, but he wasn't ready for our reckoning, which in turn gave me the monster's achievement, and I was able to turn in the quest to kill it for the did it all achievement for completing every single side mission known to man. I would trek back into Tiny Tina's DLC to beat the raid boss or bosses. They are a bunch of dragons with each being a different elemental type and with different abilities. But with me being over leveled out the ass, we destroyed these dragons easily and secured the Make It Raid achievement too. I would next go for the Donkey Kong reference achievement for killing his imposter, Donkey Mong. I couldn't find this bastard in my regular playthrough because once again, he's purely RNG and spawns randomly. But on my literal first try looking for him, we managed to find his donkey ass. Wait, okay. No way! <laughs> we got him first try! Oh my god, he's got the tie! I haven't seen this in years. Bro, I forgot he has the tie like Donkey Kong as well. Look at that! The first try. Ugly. We got it, baby. Look at that first try. All right. Yay. Yeah. And now with my final trick, I would get the last base game achievement all together before moving on to the last DLC. This one is insanely simple. All I got to do is use my Berserker's ability, which is to pull out two guns and go Berserk. And every time you kill something, you get more time with it. And that's pretty much it. And I unlocked it my first try. It's for sure. And it all comes down to this. One more DLC to end it all. Personally, this DLC was a snoozer. It was kind of hard to keep track because everyone in this DLC decided to talk over each other or just too much. I didn't like it at all. So let's get these bastard achievements out of the way and 100% this game. The story is basically after the events of Borderlands 2 and the tales from the Borderlands where the vault hunters are trying to decipher the vault map to get to other vaults. They are stopped by a dude named Hector from the Doll Battalion and he wants the map, vault key, and sanctuary, so obviously we gotta stop his ass, and that's pretty much it. So while playing through the story, I unlock the questline achievement for activating the backburner's firewall, which means it's stopping the infected enemies from us. After making a moonshot cannon to destroy Hector's defenses, I allowed Tiny Tina to arm the moonshot cannon for an achievement, we killed a spider ant named the Dark Web for one of Claptrap's quests, and we completed all the main story missions for Lilith to inevitably destroy Sanctuary and Hector in the process so we can finally get the achievement 3 or bust. With two achievements left, one of them is for killing the final raid boss, Hatterax the Invincible. And once again, us being overleveled, we absolutely demolished this worm to smithereens, which would land us the 74th achievement altogether. And who would have guessed that the last achievement would be purely RNG? The achievement Painbow Connection wants you to equip Everescent Gear, which is basically rainbow-oriented gear and weapons. Weapon and gear drops are purely RNG, who would have guessed? But me being the dude I I made sure to do this entirely legit. 
My friend had weapons to give me if I gave up, but I said no sir, and just started to do side missions that guaranteed a rainbow drop and farmed Hatteracks a few times. I started with feeding Butt Stallion some Iridium so she could vomit up a horse rainbow gun to start off my collection. The amulet I collected in Tiny Tina's DLC was used for this, so I gave it to my friend so he could get one as well so that would count as two weapons for me. I already had a rainbow relic, rainbow shield, and now two rainbow weapons. I now needed two more rainbow weapons and a rainbow grenade mod to get this last achievement. We would do a quest and find a grenade mod on the ground. And after our first time farming Hatterax again, we got some insane RNG with another rainbow AR being spawned in the loot. So now it finally comes down to one last weapon that is stopping us from 100%ing Borderlands 2. There was a low chance of getting our last weapon from a worm, but our RNG said otherwise to actually let us through and finally 100% Borderlands 2. No fucking way. No way, we got a first try. Oh. Chat, you were here. Fantastic. You were here the last time. One percent. Hold on, hold on. I'm done with it. We hit a hundred hours. A hundred and one hours. I played this game hours before, so I have to count it up, but. We're done. And with that, Borderlands 2 is officially done. If you guys happen to enjoy that, make sure to subscribe, like, and to check out my playlist full of games I've 100%ed, platinumed, and achievement grinded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.